Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. It's wonderful to be here today. So this is the Balna track, um, and we have three amazing sessions lined up. First one, um, like, why should you use Ballerina for your integration? So I'm going to cover that part. And the next one, we have um, Chatura, who will be talking about how you can modernize your legacy integrations with Ballerina. Right? The third one is Benny. I think uh, he'll be here soon. He'll talk about, like, from an external user perspective, like, um, he, he, he's been using Ballerina for years, and he'll share his experience. Right? I think, think. So those are the three sessions. Um, so let me start first. Do you feel dark matter and dark energy around you now? <laughs> right? What do you guys think? You know, I feel that more than I used to feel like, you know. And that was a wonderful talk by Dr. Randall. Um, I enjoyed it very much. I'm not sure whether I understood everything, but so that's what I understood. Um, so let's see how it goes. So this session is about Ballerina. Um, so Ballerina is an integration technology developed by WSO2. So there are a lot of terms here. Let's like take one at a time. So what do you think about, um, what, do, what do we mean by an integration technology? And how do you compare Ballerina with MI? And Ballerina with other you know, competitors, right? So integration technology, integration product is like, it has its own abstractions, right? It'll make you, it'll make it easy to write integrations. And you know, these products, you have a language, and the language knows abstractions, and then that product comes with tools to help you build, debug, run, and deploy integrations. So these products, these technologies, they are built for integration. Right? They are purpose-built. So that's the idea. That's what I mean by uh, integration technology. Right? So Ballerina is such a technology. Um, but now when you compare MI and Ballerina, What's the difference? So that's the purpose of my talk, just to like give you some ideas like how, when you can use Ballerina and how you can use Ballerina and why, why you should consider. All right. So the sessions we had in the previous track, I think they set a nice stage for this track as well. You know, if, if you were in the previous, um, you know, uh, the track they talked about like low code first integration. A lot of advantages, they talk about a lot of advantages, like when you can use a, a low code, right? So that's called low code first integration. The idea is you start with low code, you start with integration abstraction, you start with tools, and you compose integration, right? So you drag and drop the things you know, services, mediators, and you, then you configure them, and that's, that's what low-code first integration means. And then, then, you know, if you can't implement everything in low-code, then you drill down to code. Like an integration, you have general purpose languages. In the case of MI, you drag Java mediator, and you write some Java code, right? So that's what, what I mean by Java low code first integration, where you start from low code, and then you drill down to code. Then the next one is code first. So these are basically, what, I'm, what we are saying is both these approaches are correct. They are all right. Because low code first is very common. There are a lot of products, a lot of technologies. Right? So then the next one, is code first. The idea here is, you. I mean, this is not like what we are telling. There are things. There are people. There are customers who are using this in the industry, right? So you start from a Java or any other language, and then give me a second. And then you start from a low code. You start from general purpose languages like Java, C Sharp, and you know, Go, any language, and then you do integration, right? But what are the advantages of those? I think this is obvious. So I'm not gonna spend much time on this. It's like 
when you write to integration using languages like Java, C Sharp, or Go, then you have a lot of flexibility, right? And then you can do a lot of um, open source technologies, no vendor locking. Basically, you can do anything. So that's the idea. But there's no silver bullet. So there, there are many advantages. And also, there are a lot of disadvantages. And I think Isuru, from the previous track, he talked about what are the advantages of low code versus disadvantages. So this session is all about code first approach. So code first is not something we came up. It's already there in the industry. So if you go through these articles from Gartner, it is a thing in the industry. I think there's a trend. And some customers that we know of, they're already talking about this. right? So if you're interested in learning, giving a try, like low code, uh, code first approach, I think you should um, read some of these articles. And they, they talk about like how you approach low code, sorry, how you ap approach code first. Um, what are the things that you that should think about? How do you organize your team? What are the strengths of your team? If you have all these things, if you like tick all these checkboxes, then use code first, right? So if you take a step back, um, so this is sort of a team who is basically considering whether to use low code first or code first, right? So that, that's the idea. It's obviously AI generated. So, so what are they thinking? So they are, you know, let's say they want to go code first. All the boxes are checked, so they decided to go ahead with code first. Right, so the obvious choice is to use, let's say, Java, C Sharp, or Go, because those are well-established languages, and then you can, you have all the tools, mature frameworks, mature ecosystem, so you can use it, right? So that's the obvious choice. But there are so many stories about, you know, obvious choice versus the right choice. So sometimes we tend to go with the obvious choice, but we can somehow um, take a step back and think about the right choice as well. Nevertheless, let's say they decide to go with Java. Right, so this is what you are going to do. So let's say um, you pick Java. Java is very good. Like it's very mature. You know, uh, the language you designed, let's say, 1990s. And after that, uh, it picked up. Many people introduced their own frameworks and technologies. So if you look at this, it's a mature ecosystem, right? So you have a build systems, package manager, uh, application development systems like Spring, Spring Boot, testing frameworks, you know, various um, connectors for like cloud services like AWS and Azure, right? So this is good, mature. So they are going to go ahead with Java and use all these technologies of a few of these uh, frameworks, and then write the integration. What do you think? So the idea here is they need to pick whatever the combination of things that they need to use, and they write the integration, right? So life is good, but there's a catch. Java is not designed from the beginning for integration. It's designed, it's like a general purpose language where you can do anything. You have all the functions, objects, and things like that. But um, when you compare Java and this platform with another low-code integration solution like MI, or like all the competitors, you don't see the same level of abstractions. Like in MI, if you're familiar with MI, you have these proxy services, REST APIs, mediators, right? and you can drag and drop, then you, you can configure and you have an integration. And also, like, because you have all these different, different frameworks and technologies, you have to combine them and come up with a solution. When you combine them, what you have is, like, let's say, a POM with different technologies or a Gradle build file, right? Then you, you're going to do all your dependency management, keep track of security fixes. 
So it's, um, it's good for application, but for integration, uh, it may not be the right choice after all, but let's see. So even though I picked Java here, I'm a Java developer. Um, I started using Java, let's say, 2007. So this, in a few weeks, I'll be celebrating my 16th year at WSO2. So I've been writing Java for 16 years. Um, and then we, we write, we wrote the banner compiler in Java itself. So I love Java. So, but this is not a, about Java, Go, or C Sharp, but I'm trying to make a point here. Is that the right solution for integrations, right? All right. So what we need here is sort of a, a purpose-built language. So when you compare Java, it's not designed or it's not you know, tailored for integration tasks. What we really need is something like MI for code-first integration. So for, for the load, for the, sorry, for low code first integration, we have so many products. MI, a lot of co competitors out there. What we are looking for, a similar product for low code, for code first integration. So that's the idea here. So in, an, in another, another terms, we need a cohesively designed platform for code first integration. I'll talk a bit more about this. So the idea here is this. So Balna is one such solution that we have developed in WSO2. It has basically, at a high level, it has two parts. It has a complete language designed for integration with all the abstractions. And it is also like batteries included platform where you have all the integration tools that you would typically see in a low code first product. Right? So when I, what do I mean by uh, familiar programming language is that we want to have a language uh, that is familiar to most of you. Like let's say if you're coming from a C family style language like Java, C or C plus, one of our primary design goals was to come up with a language that, we, that it's familiar to you. So if you know Java, it's easy to write ballerina. So that, that, that's the idea, right? Um, all right, so Java is great, but when you see, when you compare Java and Ballerina, this is exactly what you see. I'm not like, this is not, not something marketing BS, but this is what, what you actually get when you download Ballerina. So when you download Java, you, have, you get oh, Java, I think, C sharp, go anyway. You have the language, you have the compiler, but you compose everything else. But when you download Ballerina, you get all these things by default, including package management, build system, test framework, to all the connectors to cloud services like AWS, Azure, Snowflake, to you know, you name it. Um, so all these are available as platforms. So the the benefit is that they are all designed together to work cohesively. Like if you learn one thing, the experience is similar to everything else. So it's, it's easy to basically work with. So the other idea here is, if you learn Java, then you start to think in terms of object-oriented. You know, you, you, you design your system using objects and their interactions. So basic idea is languages shape the way you think. So the idea in Ballerina is, we shape the way you think in terms of integration. So we have integration abstractions like services, clients, network interactions, data transformation, things like, they're part of the language. I'll show you like quick demo soon. So I think these, some of these things are a little bit deep, um, as in too low level for this talk. Um, I just have a slide. So, but um, I'm going to talk about them a little bit uh, detail when I'm going to do the demo. All right, let's see. But before that, I'm going to take you through the slides. I think Sanjeev showed this slide in the morning, right? Um, this is about, um, I'm not sure this works, let's see. So we have this data mapper in Ballerina, and we recently introduced the AI, because AI is everywhere, so we had to do something and AI is becoming boring now. Every product has AI. 
right? So we had to do something, and we have the AI, uh, let's say AI assisted data mapper. We'll be adding more AI features, but this is a start. So when you click on this, you'll get this picture, and it will take a few seconds to get an answer. Nine out, of, nine out of 10 times it works, right? So you'll get some mapping. So it will try its best to map, but at times it fails. If you notice the last one, the special request, it cannot map that, right? It will get improved, but right now that's, that's where we are. It's AI, so it may hallucinate. It will work nine out of 10, uh, so that's the current stage. And Sanjeeva basically showed the screenshots. I think anyone can do that. I'm gonna show you actually how it works now, right? Let's see. So this is a simple uh, ballerina integration. Can you see the source back? Font size good, okay. So when you look at the actual thing, it is a service. This is what um, I'm highlighting here. So we have a service, let's say ABC is the base part, and then it's bound to HTTP listener. So in, in Ballerina, service is a construct, like REST API, gRPC, GraphQL API. So when you click, when you start typing services, it's gonna show you like, what are the transports that you can connect to? Or what are the things that you, that you bind your service to? So these are all, you can bind your service to Azure function. You can write Azure function in Ballerina. Similarly, AWS Lambda is there. And then we have a bunch of transports, email, file, HTTP, GraphQL. If you want to go down to TCP, I think we have a TCP. Uh, UDP also there, WebSocket. I, the, what I'm saying is, all this part of the Banner platform. So you don't have to um, import different technologies. So idea here is, you get a list of bookings, right, and then uh, and said and invoke this function, publish bookings, right? And then you said accepted. So when we look at this publish bookings, um, rather than going through the code, let's visualize it. So the idea, in, idea here is like when you visualize a ballerina code, this is not about composing integration. We have a code first approach, which means you start writing code, right? So that's code first. But when you write the code, we can document, we can visualize what you wrote. So when you come back six months or six years, you still see what you have done, and it's easy for someone else to get started. So you see the high-level structure. So here the idea is we get the list of bookings, and then we have a loop. So that is this um, box around it. So we have a loop. It goes to the loop, and it will publish each bookings to this Kafka endpoint. Right? And then let's say the idea here is um, some things can fail, like you know, some bookings may fail. You collect the booking IDs here, I'll show you the code, and, and email all the failed booking IDs to someone. I don't know, it, it's like a dead letter DLC. That's when you go back to the code, let's quickly go to the code. So we have this loop that goes through bookings, and you publish, you publish each booking to Kafka, right? And then if it fails for some reason, I think in, in the Kafka, I have set it up to retry count three, so it'll, it'll handle transient failures, right? We have to do that. After that, if it still fails, it'll collect all the failed ones. And then we have this Gmail connector that I'm using, and it'll basically send a message. Very simple, if it still fails, we are log. Nothing else we can do. So if you look at, if I go up, I can see the Kafka connector here. I can see the Gmail connector, right? So um, if I go back to uh, presentation, as in we have this central dot banner to IO where you can basically figure out whether I have a connector. Let's say, I know we have a Snowflake connector, so I'm gonna type it, so it'll come up, right? So this central is our shared repository, public repository, where you can, it's like a connector store. It's not only connectors, it also like some utilities like time. 
So it will say we have a time utility. So connectors plus libraries, all are there in this um, repository. So all you have to do is just import like this, and we will download it. The build will download. And, and you don't have to, uh, right now, you don't have to worry about version, versions at all, because versions are automatically figured out, and then you know, they're all configured here in, in, in the dependency stormal file. Right, so the other thing is, let's say, the bookings, um, quickly. When I click on the bookings, it goes like Balna records. Um, so, and it has a structure, but let's see, if I go back to the UI, uh, we have this integration overview section. I can click on this booking request. It should uh, visualize and show me like the structure of the payload. So here I have the booking request, and it has booking details, and this is what it looks like, and also it has a guest. So this is the high-level tree structure of the payload, right? And this is, again, generated from sample code. Um, we can do, a, if you're interested, we can do a demo another time. Uh, and then, so one other thing is, before we actually publish that to Kafka, we do a quick, simple transformation. So what we get is a booking, and we transform that to reservation, right? So if I click on this, um, it's sort of empty now. Code is empty, so I'm gonna basically demonstrate our AI data mapper here. I'm gonna close this. So we have uh, these two records. We have the bookings request here, and we have a reservation request here. I can obviously do this, like I can do it manually, right? So that's there. But then we, you can use this new AI data mapper. Um, not sure it works, nine out of 10. Uh, let's see how it goes. Right? So eventually it will tell me that it has completed. Um, yep. I have tried this many times, so it, should, it has to work. Um, so, so that's the result, but still this is, it like not really straightforward some, some cases. Like here we have these kids ages as an array, and it, it knows how to map kids ages to number of kids as well as, so it maps the same field to two places. And here, you know, it has to do a length. That's why um, there's this quick function here. But it doesn't complete this one. So we can go back to the code and see what, I, it, what it did um, here. It's missing one thing. That's why I said uh, sometimes it misses that one. So there's one element that is, and this is now GitHub Copilot help, helping me. I'm not sure whether this is accurate. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's, that's that. So the data mapping is there. But most of the time, what we realize is when you start from code first, sometimes you never use the data mapper. You don't need because you write code, right? You can do all the assignments. And, but that's, this is one approach where you can uh, ask the AI to do it, and then you fill the gaps. Right, that's one approach. All right. I think from the demo side, this is what I have. Let's go back to the presentation and see. OK. So I'll talk a little bit about now WSO2 and Ballerina. So WSO2 is deeply invested in Ballerina. It is, um, so we have integrated Ballerina in deeply into WSO2 ecosystem. Um, I think Isuru, in his MI talk, he talked about like new features that um, that was introduced to MI, um, right? So we, and then MI, there's this thing called MI dashboard. I'm not sure whether you have used it. You can monitor all your MI nodes that are running in clusters, prod, test, and deployment. You can see all the nodes in one UI. I think I have a slide on that. And that supports only MI, but we recently introduced Balna as well. So Balna is now, you, if you have a deployment with MI and Ballerina, you can monitor and manage all these nodes. Right? So that's one aspect. The other one is, um, so our API manager, when you design a service in Ballerina, you can publish that service to the API manager service catalog for easy discovery, and, and, then, and then you can transform that into API, secured API. So the other thing is, 
um, not only W to develop ballerina, but uses ballerina in a, in a deep way, as in all W through internal systems, critical systems like payroll, what's important to me, is written in ballerina. And all the like, you know, leaves, um, ordering lunch, everything, all the internal systems are written in ballerina. And if you look at Corio, all the system services that are in Corio, uh, for example is, so when you use the Corio UI, you make a request to the GraphQL service. It's a very big GraphQL service. Uh, it's also written in Ballerina. So WS2 is heavily invested in Ballerina in both ways. Right? And if you're interested in development production support, um, there's a way, I think, this uh, slide, this link has details. Okay, so a little bit about the history. Uh, I think I'm almost there. So Ballerina is not a new product. It's been in the works like, um, like since 2016. So the idea here is, as I said, we started Ballerina like 2016. At that time, the name was Nell. Any guesses? I think it's there on the slide as well. Um, new ESB language. So that's the history. We started Ballerina as a replacement for ESB or Synapse language. You know, in ESB, in MI, what you have is XML language. So we want to have a, we want to improve that language, but finally we end up with two products. One is for low code, one is for code. But that's how we started. And then Ballerina went through like several iterations, previews, but finally in 2022, we released the first major release. And that's when we made the commitment to come up with like, you know, we made the backward compatible releases. Now, from 2022, we did like nine releases, major releases, the last one was last one came like a week ago, which is on like update nine. Um, I'm not going to go through all the features. Um, there's there's a release blog, there's a release note. If you're interested, do take a look. Right? Okay. So I know Balna is new, so it's always good to be cautious. I think you should take a step back and evaluate. Right? Right? Um, I think this is what I'm trying to express. So it nicely captures, but eventually you'll we'll find out it's not that hard, but you can only connect dots backward. backward. That's what Sanjay said. Um, all right. So, any guesses on this picture? Sorry about the professional drawing. Um, I had only a few hours. I think Sam and uh, I think Sam drew this in a few uh, minutes. Yeah. Exactly. The light bends, right? So you have a dark matter that's around us. Um, that's what you see. The B prime is what you see now because you haven't tried ballerina, right? And then when you actually try it, you will realize that it's not that. I mean, hard, not that uh, new. It's stable, but, sorry? <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to put it. Okay, anyway, what I was telling is this. I think you should give it a try. Uh, you'll never know until you give it a try. So give it a try. Please do tell us your feedback. Um, I, if you are, if you are uh, considering low code integration, sorry, code first integration, Compare Balna with other languages and give it a try and see it for yourself, right? All right, thank you.